What's up? My name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine, a retailer and a consultant. And this is my channel where we are thirsty for knowledge and wine. So this is Wine in 10 where I tell you everything you need to know about a region or a grape variety in 10 minutes. I promised you this episode before and now I'm going to deliver. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the beautiful beast of grapevines, Syrah. So let's do this. So what is Syrah? Syrah is a widely planted but often misunderstood grape variety. Syrah can produce some of the greatest wines in the world, but it is also used in some very basic wine qualities. So Syrah is the world's sixth most planted grape variety, but it doesn't have the same reputation, the same gravitas as Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir do. So Syrah's origins have been discussed quite a bit. Some people have said it comes from Sicily, from the city of Syracuse, or some people have suggested that it might come from Persia. The city of Shiraz is still the fifth biggest city in Iran. But like many legends in the wine world, this wasn't really true. When they started doing DNA analysis of Syrah in the 90s, they found out that it is actually a natural crossing of Mondeuse Blanche and Durezza. It is pretty likely that this crossing happened somewhere close to the Rhone River in the eastern part of France. What is also quite interesting is that Pinot Noir is actually a grandparent of Syrah and Viognier, the white grape variety that is also grown in the northern Rhone, is a sibling of Syrah. Viticulturally, Syrah is actually not that difficult to grow. It has a late bud burst, which means that spring frost isn't a big issue. It has a fairly short maturation period and ripens a bit earlier than grape varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. Syrah is very vigorous and I can remember really well that during my ampelography classes at university, Syrah was actually quite easy to identify because it's very green and it has lots of leaves and lots of shoots. But let's check out the Bible so that we can see what Syrah berries actually look like. So as you can see here, Syrah bunches can be pretty big. The berries are small to medium in size and you also have five lobes here in the leaves. And Bible time's over. So as Syrah matures quite quickly, you are able to produce very different styles depending on the picking date. So if you pick early, you get a lot of freshness, a lot of herbaceousness and a lot of acidity. If you wait too long, you lose that acidity and you lose some of the aroma as well. Even though Syrah is used for producing entry-level wines as well, you lose a lot of the quality if you have high yields. You want to reduce the yields as much as possible in order to produce an expressive and age-worthy wine. In Syrah's homeland, in the northern Rhone, growers sometimes distinguish between Petit Syrah and Gros Syrah. But Gros Syrah is actually not Syrah. It's another name for the grape variety Mondeuse Noir. To make it even more complicated, there's another grape variety called Petit Syrah, spelled like this. It is used quite a bit in California in order to produce rich and concentrated wines, but it's not actually Syrah. It is also known under the name of Durif. When it comes to winemaking, you can actually produce quite a lot of different styles of Syrah. Picking date is a very important factor, but another important factor is the use of oak. In my opinion, Syrah doesn't absorb the oak flavor as well as, for example, Cabernet Sauvignon does. So if you use too much new oak, you can really smell that quite a bit in the beginning, especially. There was a time when a lot of winemakers all around the world were using a lot of new oak with Syrah, and that is changing, fortunately. So now we know what Syrah is, but where does it actually grow? Syrah is grown all around the world. There are roughly 190,000 hectares of vineyards planted to Syrah in 31 different countries. So Syrah is therefore the sixth most planted grape variety in the world. The number one country for the production of Syrah wines is France. 64,000 hectares of vineyards are actually planted to Syrah in France. But that wasn't always the case. In the 1970s, most of the Syrah plantings were actually located in the Rhone. This reminds me, check out my video on the Northern Rhone. I'll link it up somewhere up there. Grape growers in southern France actually discovered Syrah as a grape variety in order to improve the quality of their wines and it's now very widely planted in the south of France. So this is how Syrah plantings have grown from roughly 3,000 hectares in the early 1970s to more than 60,000 hectares today. In the south of France, Syrah is actually most of the times blended with the grape varieties Grenache, Mauvetre, Sanso and or Carignan. 
So in second place is actually Australia. They have 40,000 hectares of vineyards planted to Syrah. Syrah or Shiraz as they call it down under probably arrived in Australia in 1832 imported by a man called James Busby. Today Australia is well known for really concentrated and rich Shirazes. They have also perfected the Syrah or Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon Cuvée. In third place, we actually have a bit of a surprise. Spain also has 20,000 hectares of Syrah plantings, but most of them are located in La Mancha, a region that is not really known for producing high-end, high-quality wines. And I don't really see a lot of great Syrahs coming out of Spain on the shelves in Germany, at least. In fourth place, we have Argentina with 13,000 hectares of Syrah vineyards. Most of them are based in Mendoza and San Juan. In my experience, the best examples actually come from the slightly higher located vineyards in the mountains. In fifth place, we have South Africa with 11,000 hectares of Syrah vineyards. There are some really impressive Syrahs coming out of South Africa. For example, the wines of Moulineux or the Sadie family wines. We also have some honorable mentions, countries that produce great Syrahs but don't really produce a lot of that grape variety. You can find grape Syrahs in California or Washington State, for example, in New Zealand and in Chile. So which glass should you use for your Syrah wines? I like this Riedel Performance glass. It's a beautiful Syrah glass that does a really good job, but you don't necessarily need a Syrah glass. I think a big glass like a Bordeaux glass, for example, is just fine. You just want to make sure that you don't have a small, small glass. So what does Syrah actually taste like? For me, Syrah is the wild beast compared to Cabernet Sauvignon's Black Horse. It is dark in color. It has lots of richness and concentration, and it always has some wildness to it. If you've watched my Northern Rhone video, you actually already know that Syrah wines were used in order to increase the richness and concentration of Bordeaux wines in the past. This procedure was called Hermitage. Syrah has high levels of tannins, so you better prepare your gums for a little bit of a punch, but the tannins are most of the time less aggressive than Cabernet Sauvignon's. In my blind tastings, I often identified Syrah because of a very distinct flavor that the wines often have. It is the flavor of black pepper. The compound that is responsible for this flavor in Syrah wines, but also in peppercorns, is called rotundin. Especially berries from cooler regions where you get less sunlight on the bunches have this compound in higher concentrations. I also need to add that not everyone can smell rotundin. Trials have shown that 25 to 30% of all people can smell this flavor. Syrah wines come in a big quality range from Yellowtail Syrah from Australia to the very high-end wines of Hermitage, for example. There are essentially two different styles of wines being made with this grape variety. One is most of the time called Syrah and the other is called Shiraz. Wines from all around the world with Syrah on the label tend to be more in the Northern Rhone style with less alcohol, less oak, and more freshness. Those wines tend to be more fashionable right now with soms and wine critics. Shiraz wines tend to be more concentrated and full-bodied, more in the Australian model, and oftentimes they are more influenced by the flavor of oak. Both styles can be really interesting. I love big and full-bodied Australian Shirazes, but I also like more refined and elegant Syrahs from all around the world. So you really have to taste as many wines as possible in order to find out what you really like. The great thing about Shiraz or Syrah wines is that they are more affordable than, for example, the really good wines from Cabernet Sauvignon and Pinot Noir. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot about Syrah. If you liked this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There are more really awesome videos coming up, so stay tuned. My question of the day is really easy. What is your favorite Syrah? I also want to give a shout out to Spirit Alex for all of his great comments. I hope I see you guys soon. Until then, stay thirsty.